It's Create Day, my friends. Today I am transforming an old bucket and watering can into a soothing water feature. Let's get started. I have this old watering can that was really cute, but it spent too much time out in the weather. And then this old bucket that came from Kirkland's, it had a buffalo check pattern on it. And it also spent too much time out in the weather. So I'm going to cover up that rust with some automotive enamel and then paint this with my flat black spray paint. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you find my content useful. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you for your continued support. I'm also giving the watering can a coat of the same flat black spray paint. I'm using IOD Sunflowers Mold to make some sunflowers for my can and I'm using my DAS or DAS uh, air dry clay. I put cornstarch in the molds first, then I add my clay and remove the excess around the edges. I find it's helpful to use a scraper to help flatten out the back. I'm making two of these smaller ones and then one of the large sunflower. These are going to go on the front of my bucket. And I found it's helpful to just go around those edges first and get them to release before peeling the rest of the mold out. And these molds are just absolutely beautiful. Now I'm making a couple of stems for the smaller sunflowers. I'm going to attach all of these pieces onto my bucket with my Gorilla wood glue. I go ahead and set everything out first and making sure that everything fits the way I want it to. And then I start with the stem and then go on and attach the sunflower to it. Now I'm going to roll out some of the air dry clay so that I can use some letter uh, cookie cutters to make a phrase. I wanted to make a whole phrase on this bucket that said, honey bees and sunflowers please. So I did cut out all those letters, but it, it wouldn't fit. They were too big. So I had to just shorten it to bees and sunflowers. I got these off of Amazon and I will leave them linked in the description box below along with a product list and anything else that I can leave links to. And so now this is where I am gluing on all my letters. I did let these dry for a little longer than I would if I was using a chalk paint because I'm going in with that flat spray paint again and I didn't know how it would react if the molds were still wet so I let them set up even though they weren't completely dry and it turned out just fine. Now I'm going in with the color marigold on my little watering can. Next step is to paint the bucket in this color called cinnamon. Now we can get on to the hand painting. I'm starting with this uh, chalk paint in the color Java. I'm going to paint the center of the sunflowers in this color and then I will also do my letters in this color but I end up not liking that and changing it a couple of times before we're done. Now back to our watering can. I'm going to be using these stamps from IOD's Birds and Bees and I'm applying them with Stays on Ink and Jet Black. I'm going to pick out some different sizes of the bees 
and apply those to the watering can. I'm starting with the larger one. I'm going to put him right on the very top of my watering can. And even though he doesn't completely fit, I think it looks just fine. I'm going to go ahead and apply some more of the bees, trying to keep it steady with one hand while pressing it down with the other. I did get a little smudging on one of them, um, but for the most part, they all turned out. Now back to the bucket. I'm taking antique gold and I'm going to just brush this into the recessed areas that go from the base of that the sunflower, like the middle section of the sunflower, and drag it out but not all the way to the edge. And then I'm going in with my dark brown before this is dry and I'm going to blend that in with that antique gold. Not completely mixing the two colors but just blending I just want some darkness at the um, center area of those sunflower petals. And now for the petals themselves, I'm going to be using my antique gold and a lighter color called Butter. I'm starting with the antique gold. I'm going to paint a section of these petals and then I will go in with the lighter color. So I'm brushing off that, the paint off that brush and I'm using that same brush and then adding the lighter color. Just blending those two colors together. I continue this process around the entire flower and I do the same on the two smaller flowers as well. Here's how that looks and now we're going to let that dry and I'm going to move on to the stems. I'm starting with leaf green for the stems and then I will be blending in my dark brown. So here's where I'm adding the dark brown. We're going to let that dry and then I'm going to go in with another color on my sunflowers. And this one is called Honey Mustard. I'm using this color as more of a highlight. I'm just brushing this on the outer two-thirds of the petals. I'm not covering up those dark areas and I'm using a very light hand, not a lot of paint. I just want to get all these different shades on there so that it has a more natural look. And now I want to add some olive green to the stems. I'm just using a light hand and adding this in so that I have all three colors on there. Now we're going with golden straw on our sunflower petals. This is a slightly brighter color. I'm going to put this kind of in the middle of the petals, leaving those very tips still the lighter color. And now with my dark brown paint, I am going to do a dry brush over the center of the sunflowers to um, add some highlight. And this is, isn't the only color I'm going to use, but it's, well, here we go. Nutmeg is the next one. So I wanted to add that um, different type of brown in there so that these just have some more dimension and realism to them. Now I'm going with a bright yellow, which is really bright, but I'm just going to add this sparingly, and then I will go back in and tone this down with that antique gold. I'm not covering up the bright yellow. I am just kind of almost like a dry brush blending over it just to tone it down a little bit. I absolutely love having all these layers of colors on my projects. I just think it really makes a big difference. So now with my Stazon ink and Jet Black and my little applicator sponge, I'm going to add some distressing around the edges of my watering can. I think this is the last color that I add to the center of the sunflowers. It's called Honeycomb. It's a lighter color and I'm dry brushing this over all those little gorgeous details of the center of those sunflowers. 
so like I said, I wasn't happy with the brown. I just felt like it just, uh, it was just too bland for the lettering. So I decided to go with black. I did not like that either. So now I'm breaking out the white chalk paint and a sunflower napkin, and I'm going to decoupage those letters. The first step is to paint all of my letters with a couple of coats of the white chalk paint. But I wanted to do a trial here first with the B, so I'm applying my Mod Podge on there. I'm going to put the napkin on. I want to see how I like this before I do all of them. So I'm going to press that on and then use my water pen to just cut out the areas on the in the middle of the B. And then you can just trim off the edges that way too. You can also, um, like I took a toothpick to help kind of scrape that off. If you get it wet on the edges, you can just kind of scrape it off of there. And I did like the way that looked. I wanted to go for it. This would give it a really fun and, I don't know, almost kind of a hippie look. I wanted this to be very playful and fun, not not like a serious, um, I don't know, classic work of art or something. I just wanted it to be a lot of fun. So I decided to go for it. And I painted all those letters with two coats of the white chalk paint. And then uh, one by one, I just went in with my Mod Podge on each letter, cut out a piece of the napkin, and then Mod Podged it on there. And for the napkin I used, I will have that linked in the description box. And I only use the top ply. You want to separate your plies and only use the top ply. And then I use my water pen. You can use a paintbrush dipped in water to trim around to just make a section of what you want to use. And you can also use tweezers to pull off those excess pieces. It got a final coat of Mod Podge and now we're ready for our final exterior coat. I'm using automotive enamel for the inside of the bucket. I am going to use Krylon Fusion Flat Clear for the outside of the bucket as well as the outside of my little watering can. And then I remembered that I wanted to distress the edges of my bucket, so I'm going back in with that stays on ink and hitting the top edges around the handles and on the bottom edge. So now it's time to start putting this thing together. I drilled a hole through the bottom of my watering can. I have my tubing and it's attached to my pump. I got the pump off of Amazon. It's super powerful. In fact, it was too powerful for this project. Originally, I thought I was going to have the bucket on the ground and this little uh, watering can would be on a shepherd's hook, like about three to four feet above it. So I bought this 550 gallons per hour pump and it's adjustable, but even at the lowest setting, it was way too powerful for what I was doing because I decided to move this bucket up onto a table. So I took this little old table and spray painted it with the color espresso because when I laid the bucket out on the ground with the watering can on the shepherd's hook, it just didn't look right. There was a big gap and the wind would blow that water all over the place. So I decided to go this route, but I thought I could still use that pump, which was a big mistake. I did a test run here. I'm just kind of getting everything set up. The water went everywhere but in the bucket. It was way too powerful. It was overflowing out of the top of the watering can. So I thought, well, I'll just make all these little holes bigger and it can pump more water through there. But that didn't end up being the case. It was still just way too powerful. So then I decided that when it was time to go ahead and add my silicone to seal up the hole in the bottom that I would just add some of the silicone to those outer holes and kind of plug them up uh, to reduce the amount of spray. I would, The water was just spraying out all over the place. So I thought I could fix this. I was determined to use that pump I had bought, which was a big mistake. I needed a smaller pump. So anyway, here I'm just applying that silicone. I had to do it a couple of times because I didn't get complete coverage the first time there was still a leak. And here's where I'm filling in those outer holes. I just wish I had 
had just gotten a smaller pump like I ended up doing. If I had done that first, I wouldn't have ruined this thing with all those big holes in there and then having to try and fill them in. But here we are with a smaller pump. It did finally work. I get a little bit of splattering, um, but it's not bad at all. It all came together just fine with just that smaller, like 90 gallons per hour pump. That's what I needed. So I will show you that I have the tubing comes out from the pump and goes down and is attached to the shepherd's hook with some zip ties. And then I attach the top with a zip tie as well. And then I just have this old greenery that I decided to just go ahead and throw in here. I need to trim off that little ring there that shows. Um, and I put a little solar light in there that will light up at night. And there we are. I just had the greenery there to kind of help hide the cords. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two like I did. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've been inspired to go create something. See you next time.